Sorry, did you say something? No. No? It's not conjugated. And why not? Um, because it has it has two sp3 orbitals that are okay. contain no lone pairs. Yeah, now how do we know these are sp3? How do we know the exception doesn't apply here? Because as you were saying, there's no lone pairs. This is adjacent to an sp2, but has no lone pairs. So here we just follow the normal rule, and we would call this an sp3. But remember, the rule for conjugation is side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals at three or more atoms. Okay. Was there a p orbital at this atom? Yes. How about this one? Yes. Yeah. In fact, how many side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals do we have? So in fact, we do satisfy this rule, and this is conjugated. This might be where that video series might throw you off a little bit, because in that video series, I was focusing on whether the molecules were completely conjugated. And that's not really a concept that we'll need for your course this term. It would be completely conjugated only if there was overlapping p orbitals at every atom in the ring. That's probably what you were thinking about here. So we would not say this is completely conjugated, because there, if there's not overlapping p orbitals at all the atoms in the ring. But it's still what we could call partially conjugated. Or for your course, for, for this term, we can just say it is conjugated. So all we need is three or more atoms. You don't need to have the overlap at all the atoms. We don't need to have the overlap at all the atoms. When you study Huckel's rule next term, you'll get into more complications. But for this term, we're just going to focus on conjugated means, side-to-side -side overlap at three or more atoms. It's OK if there's other atoms that are not part of the conjugated system. So this is conjugated. Does that make sense? OK. But it's good that you saw that these would be sp3 hybridized. whether this molecule is conjugated. Yes. And what is that? Um, because we have uh, this is gonna this meets the uh, requirement for being considered sp two because it has a uh, lone pair. Right. And it's um, connected to an sp two. Good. Um, carbon. Right. And that carbon is connected to sp two, so we have three or more sp twos. Okay. Maybe you misread this or changed your mind about that. Then? Uh, yeah, I just. I saw right. what I identified initially with. Right, the, okay, all right. Well, for your notes, you might want to cross that out now, but that's good. So remember that in normal situations, this nitrogen would be sp3. This would normally be sp3, following the rule for hybridization. However, as you said, in this case, the exception kicks in because it has a lone pair and it's connected to something that's sp2. So we break the normal rule and we say this nitrogen is sp2, but that means that it, ha it can contribute a, a, a p orbital. And this can contribute to p orbital, and this can contribute to p orbital. So we have three side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. Well, three is as many as we need. Now, this might not be completely conjugated, because maybe there's no p orbitals over here on this r. We didn't say what this is. But we don't need the p orbitals everywhere. We just need three adjacent atoms with side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. So this would come in as being conjugated. This is the one that I think might be most difficult for students to see, that this is conjugated. But now we can use our rules and our exception for hybridization to see that. Like I said, you're pretty sure to see some examples like this in the test where you're asked whether a molecule is conjugated or not. So these are good to have in your notes. By the way, here's a definition that people oftentimes get for conjugation. Sometimes students are told that conjugated means alternating single and double bonds. At first, students are oftentimes told that conjugated means alternating single and double bonds. But now we can see that's not really general enough. We can see that if you've got alternating single and double bonds, you're going to be conjugated. But there's other cases that are conjugated too. For example, here's a case with alternating single and double bonds. And we saw that this was conjugated. Double, single, double. 
if you have alternating single and double bonds, we can see you're going to be conjugated because you have a bunch of sp2s that are adjacent to each other. And here we also have alternating single and double bonds, double, single, double. It's not alternating everywhere, but there's a portion where it's alternating single and double bonds, and that makes this conjugated too. But we don't really have that in this molecule. We just have a single double bond, not alternating single and double bonds. But this just shows that there's other ways to be conjugated, even if you don't have the alternating single and double bond. So this is the best definition to use for conjugated. This is the most general definition. Alternating single and double bonds is too specific. The best definition is side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals at three or more atoms. That's the best definition of conjugation. Side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals is just a special case of that. Because it's not because there's an SP3 in the middle, is there? That's right. Good. And uh, there's no lone pairs on that SP3, so it doesn't. Which is the reason that it's SP3 and not, not SP2. That's right. So it, it doesn't qualify for the exception. That's right, because the P orbital here is not close enough to the P orbital over here to overlap. Here we have two overlapping p orbitals, and here we have two overlapping p orbitals, but there's no p orbital on an sp3 atom. As you saw in the video series, sp3 atoms don't have p orbitals. That's a very important fact that you saw in that other video series. So these, the p orbital here can't overlap with the p orbital here. They're not adjacent. They're too far away. So this would be non-conjugated. So we can't just assume that just because there's more than one double bond means that something is conjugated. You're right. This one is not conjugated. We'll do one more example like this. Let's decide whether this molecule is conjugated. That's right. Pretty much for the same reason as the previous molecule, because there's a p orbital here, and a p orbital here, and a p orbital here, and a p orbital here, but these two atoms are sp3. They don't have p orbitals, so they interrupt the overlapping p orbital structure. We, don't have any, we never have three adjacent atoms with three overlapping p orbitals, so this would not be conjugated. The exception doesn't kick in here, even though this is attached to an sp2 atom because it doesn't have any lone pairs. All right, well, we did a bunch of examples like that because that's a popular type of test question. So now you have that in your notes, and you can review those ideas. And again, you have to be in the habit, again, of always looking now for this exception to our rule for hybridization. We have, you never really went over that earlier in the course because we didn't, you didn't really have any examples where the exception was important. But for the rest of the course, that's going to be important. For the rest of the course, we can't just use the normal rule for hybridization. We always have to watch out for atoms with lone pairs that are connected to sp2 atoms and watch out for that exception.